So a while back, I really wanted to try some more affordable lens options to see what I could recommend people starting out in photography. I reached out to TT Artisan, a Chinese lens company. They sent me a lens that at first I wasn't particularly too excited about, but was pleasantly surprised. This is the TT Artisan 35mm f1.4 for crop sensor cameras. This little lens is available for 73 US dollars and is available in a variety of different mounts. Sony E-mount, Fuji X, Nikon Z, Canon EF-M, and Leica L, and even Micro Four Thirds. So you have a ton of different options no matter what camera you have. The TT Artisan 35mm f1.4 is purely manual focus, so it does not have any autofocus capabilities, nor does it have any electrical connection to your camera. So if you need autofocus, I would recommend just turning away now. But if you shot with film camera lenses before, this might feel very familiar to you. The design is a little bit of an ode to vintage film lenses. It's got a very well dampened focus ring and a clicked aperture ring. This little aperture ring is probably one of the few things that annoyed me about the construction. Um, it's just so thin that when I was shooting with it, it's a little hard to grip. I kind of wish they shrunk the focus ring a little bit to add some more threading for the aperture dial. It also comes with this interesting screw-on metal cap. It does a great job protecting your front element, but I'm always kind of on the go when I shoot, so I didn't like the fact that I had to screw this whole thing off and then screw it back on just to protect that front element. But it's, it's not a big deal. I kind of wish they put a pinch cap on there, but it does have a 39 millimeter filter thread, so you can easily get a UV filter and just throw that on the front so you don't have to deal with unscrewing or screwing on the metal lens cap. Now, before we get to the actual image performance of this lens, I'd like to show you a quick documentary, a little project that I shot with my friend Simon Shin. He's a uh, street photographer based in the San Francisco Bay Area. So I followed Simon around the city and made it a goal to shoot the video entirely on the 35 millimeter f1.4 to see, can I get an, a usable end result with this lens? And without further ado, I'll let you watch. When I go on location, my first thought is always, how can I make this composition more unique? How can I make it more mine? How can I be not so much of a copycat and try to be more original? But I think like the most important part is to find that story and what it signifies. My name is Simon Shim. I'm a street photographer based in San Francisco. Street photography always changes. You could go to a location every single day at the same time. Every single day it could change. Like the different subjects that walk through that same scene could be very different each and every single day. So I think that level of change and level of variability is like so high. I think that's what like really drives me towards like street photography. The technique is where you give yourself 25 minutes to focus on one thing, um, but at the end of that 25 minutes, you have like a five minute break to relax or do whatever. Um, so I try to use that same concept for street photography. So I give myself one hour, maybe one hour 30, only take street photography, only take street photos, don't focus on anything else. And at the end of that one hour, I come back and I, and I wrap up the session. By forcing me to go through this time limit, it really helps me to focus on just taking street photos.
whatever we do in our lives gets to a point where you just don't want to be a hobbyist for your lifetime and in order to get better at it like you gotta spend the time I hope people take away from my photos is that hey like you don't need to copy you know the same compositions like you can be creative hopefully it, it provides that inspiration and it provides that motivation for folks to try new things So to reflect on my experience using a lens in a real world environment, um, I'll start with some of the downsides first. It doesn't have AF, which isn't the biggest deal in the world when um, shooting video, but it's very small. So it was hard to handle the, um, the aperture dial and the, the focus ring. There's no lens stabilization. So in some of the scenes where I'm walking around hand holding everything, you can kind of see a lot of the, uh, the image rocking back and forth. But ultimately, I achieved my angle with producing a real world project with a sub $100 lens. And to get straight to the point about the image performance of this thing, is that you can get some surprisingly good photos out of this. And there are a lot of perks to shooting something of this size. It's super easy to everyday carry. Um, it's got a great focal length for street photography. So it's 35 millimeters on a crop sensor camera and 52 millimeters when you're on a full frame camera. The biggest win for this tiny little lens is that it opens up to f1.4. So if you're doing some low light shooting or if you're in the street or if you just want to get crazy depth of field, you can achieve that with this lens. And that's not typical with the cheaper lenses. Now the image is pretty soft when you have this thing opened up to f1.4 or even f2. Once you stop down to f2.8 or f4 or f5.6, a lot of the vignetting is gone, you're getting a lot of the sharpness back, and you get a pretty solid image out of it. And even when shooting at f1.4 or f2, um, some of the dreamy like characteristics because of the lack of sharpness can kind of add to your photo too. So to sum up the pros and cons of this little lens, some of the pros, um, it's got an all metal construction, it's got a really nice smooth focus ring and a clicked uh, aperture ring. It's a great focal length at 35 millimeters or 52 in full frame for street photography or everyday carry. Um, and it opens up to f1.4 for great depth of field or low light shooting. Still unavoidably, it's a cheap lens and so the image performance is going to lack when you're looking for sharpness wide open. But again, you can stop down to f2.8, f4, and you still have a really good image. There's no autofocus in this thing. If you're gonna use this, you should feel comfortable using manual focus lenses, and you're probably gonna need to take your time and slow down when using this. These are small things to complain about when you're paying such a relatively low amount. Considering the images you can get out of this thing, it's pretty impressive. So if you're just starting out in photography, or if you're just generally looking for a cheap, crop sensor lens for your camera, I'd highly recommend the TT Artisan 35mm f1.4. Thanks for sticking around. Um, I finally moved into New York, so I have time to produce videos on a more regular schedule. I still work as a professional videographer and photographer, so I still have that full gig going on. But yeah, stay tuned, subscribe, and comment and like on any of these videos if you like them. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching.